Chapter 16, Managerial Accounting Concepts and Principles. So on this slide, we are comparing financial and managerial accounting. Um, so if you recall, we have financial statements and we have management reports. And financial statements are used by external users, company management, um, and the management reports, they're used by the internal management. And this just kind of lists through the different users of the information, so financial statements, external users and company management. The nature of information is objective information. Um, we prepare these according to GAAP standards and they're prepared at fixed intervals and we focus on the company as a whole when we're preparing our financial statements. For our management reports, those are prepared for management they can be objective and subjective. We prepare these according to management needs. And they are also prepared at fixed intervals, but they're also prepared on an as needed basis. And then we focus on these as a company whole, or we can also use management reports um, as for segments. So they can be segmented. In most companies, departments, or similar organizational units are assigned responsibilities for specific functions or activities. The operating structure of a company can be shown in an organizational chart or an org chart. And this is just a chart that shows um, the level of employees and who those people are in a company. So a lot of times the org chart will start with the president, of the company and then you would have like a VP, CFO, etc. down the line and just list everyone and then who they who they report to or who reports to them depending on how you're looking at the chart top to bottom bottom to top. The departments in a company can be viewed as either having line responsibilities or they can have staff responsibilities. So when talking about a line department, a line department is directly involved in providing goods or services to the customers of the company. And a staff department provides services, assistance, and advice to the departments with line or other staff responsibilities. A staff department has no direct authority over a line department. In most companies, the controller is the chief management accountant. The controller's staff consists of a variety of other accountants who are responsible for specialized accounting functions. The management process has the following five basic phases which interact with one another. You have the planning phase, directing phase, controlling phase, improving phase, and decision making phase. A cost is a payment of cash or the commitment to pay cash in the future for the purpose of generating revenues. In managerial accounting, costs are often classified according to the decision making needs of management. For example, costs are often classified by their relationship to a segment of operations called a cost object. Costs identified with cost objects are either direct cost or indirect cost. And direct costs are identified with and can be easily traced to a cost object. Indirect cost cannot be identified with or cannot be traced to a cost object. The cost of a manufactured product includes the cost of materials used in making the product. In addition, the cost of a manufactured product includes the cost of converting the materials into a finished product. Thus, the cost of a finished product includes direct materials cost, direct labor cost, and factory overhead. A 
A manufactured product begin with raw materials that are converted into finished products to be classified as a direct materials cost. The cost must be both an integral part of the finished product and a significant portion of the total cost of the product. So, for example, making a pencil, the lead would be an integral part of the finished product because you have to have the lead to use the pencil. Um, the wood, that's probably a the wood is probably a significant portion of the pencil, so it would also be a direct materials cost. Most manufacturing processes use employees to convert materials into finished products. The cost of employee wages that is an integral part of the finished product is classified as direct labor cost. So any employee that directly works on Finishing the product would be considered uh, direct, their, their wages would be considered direct labor cost for the product. And direct labor cost must meet both of the following criteria. It should be an integral part of the finished product or a significant portion of the total cost of the product. So both integral and significant. Cost other than direct materials cost and direct labor are incurred in the manufacturing process are combined and classified as factory overhead cost. Sometimes we also see this listed as manufacturing overhead or factory burden. All factory overhead costs are indirect cost of the product. And factory overhead cost also includes materials and labor cost that do not enter directly into the finished product. Some examples include the cost of oil used to lubricate machinery and the wages of janitorial and supervisory employees. Direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead costs may be grouped together for analysis and reporting. Two such common groupings are prime cost and conversion costs. A prime cost is a cost that consists of direct materials and direct labor cost. A conversion cost consists of direct labor and factory overhead cost. Conversion costs are the cost to convert the materials into a finished product. Direct labor is both a prime cost and a conversion cost. So direct labor is both prime and conversion. For financial reporting purposes, costs are classified as product cost or period cost. Product costs consist of manufacturing costs. You have direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead. Period costs consist of selling and administrative costs. And some period costs, you have selling expenses that are incurred in the marketing of the product and delivering the product to the customer. You also could have administrative expenses that are incurred in managing the company that are not directly related to the manufacturing or selling functions. As product costs are incurred, they are recorded and reported on the balance sheet as inventory. When the inventory is sold, the cost of the manufactured product sold is reported as cost of goods sold on the income statement. Period costs are reported as expenses on the income statement in the period in which they are incurred. So period costs never appear on the balance sheet. A merchandising business reports only merchandise inventory on its balance sheet. In contrast, a manufacturing business reports three types of inventory on its balance sheet. And those three types of inventory are materials inventory, work in process inventory, and finished goods inventory.
Materials inventory is also called raw materials inventory, so you can use those interchangeably. And materials inventory consists of the cost of the direct and indirect materials that have not yet entered the manufacturing process. And then once we start manufacturing the process, then we'll move into work in process inventory. And work in process consists of the direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead costs for the products that we have started manufacturing, but they're just, they're not yet completed. They're in process. And then once we finish the product, we'll then move it into finished goods inventory. This consists of completed or finished products that have not yet been sold. This is actually one that needs to be fixed on the slides. <laughs> so a merchandising business purchases merchandise ready for resale to customers. The total cost of the merchandise available for sale during the period is determined as follows. So to find the, the total cost of the merchandise, you're gonna take beginning merchandise inventory plus your net purchases and that's going to give you your merchandise that's available for sale. To find the cost of merchandise sold, you're going to take the cost of merchandise that's available for sale, subtract out whatever your ending merchandise inventory is, and that will tell you how much merchandise you sold in that period. It'll give you your cost of merchandise sold. A manufacturer makes the products it sells using direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead. The total cost of making products that are available for sale during the period is called the cost of goods manufactured. The cost of finished goods available for sale is determined by taking the beginning finished goods inventory plus your cost of goods manufactured during the period and that's going to give you your cost of finished goods that are available for sale. The cost of goods sold, you'll take cost of finished goods available for sale minus your finished goods inventory, and that will tell you how much goods you've actually sold, your cost of goods sold. Cost of goods manufactured is required to determine the cost of goods sold. The cost of goods manufactured is often determined by preparing a statement of cost of goods manufactured. So here we have an example of the statement of cost of goods manufactured. And we start with our beginning work in process inventory, and then we have our direct materials. And in our direct materials category, we have beginning materials inventory, any purchases that we may have made, and um, our ending materials inventory as well. We also look at our direct labor, our factory overhead, total manufacturing cost incurred, and total manufacturing cost. And the end result is going to give us our cost of goods manufactured. This chart is showing us the flow of manufacturing cost. So again, our manufacturing costs, we have direct materials, direct labor, factory overhead, and all of these costs roll into the manufacturing process. When we use those materials, and then while they're in the manufacturing process, if they're not finished, we're still manufacturing them, they'll go into our work in process inventory. Once they're finished and completed, they'll move to the finished goods inventory. And if there are any direct materials that we did not use, those will go onto our materials inventory account. And all of those accounts are listed on our balance sheet. So materials inventory, work in process inventory, and finished goods inventory are all on our balance sheet. 
And once we sell the items, once they've been finished and then we sell them, we then will move it over to our income statement in the cost of goods sold category. Managerial accounting provides information and reports for managers to use in the operating the business. Managerial accounting provides the cost of manufacturing a product, which can be used to determine its selling price. Managerial accounting allows for comparing the cost of manufacturing products over time and can be used to monitor and control the cost of direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead. Performance reports allow management to identify any large amounts of scrap metals or employee downtime. A report could analyze the potential efficiencies and dollar savings of purchasing computerized equipment to speed up the production process. A report could analyze how many units are needed to be sold to cover operating costs and expenses. And this information can be used to set monthly selling targets and bonuses for sales personnel. So these reports basically are used to help you to improve your business or increase your efficiencies. If you have an employee that has a lot of downtime, you could, um, you know, give them another duty instead of hiring someone else. Um, you could, you know, offer them more work or even maybe more hours. Maybe they're not getting the amount of hours that they want. Um, and that, that's also how, if they are getting, you know, if they are like a salaried worker, but they have a lot of downtime, then it benefits the company to just, to give them more duties to, for them to have something to do during their, during their downtime, instead of the company hiring someone else to come in and now they're paying two salaries um, when they could only be paying one. And, let's see, and then with the computerized equipment, if you're, you know, the report can analyze potential efficiencies and dollar savings to speed up production process, you know, that would also increase the efficiencies of the company. So there's lots of different types of reports that managers can use. And a lot of times they're just, they're looking at different things. It could be something within their department that they're looking to improve or the company as a whole. Practice problems. In order to be useful to managers, managerial accounting reports should possess all of the following characteristics except. So the first one says, provide objective measures of past operations and subjective estimates about future decisions. They should. Um, so when we, um, so when we're looking at accounting reports, we want the accounting reports to be objective and they look at our past operations to give us these estimates for future decisions. That's one of the main reasons that we do have managerial accounting reports. Um, B, be prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. No, because earlier we mentioned that um, this, the managerial reports, they do not, they don't require GAAP because they're managerial reports, financial statements do. Um, so B would be the correct answer for this one because it's saying possess all of the following except. So we don't need, it doesn't need to be prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. For managerial accounting reports, we do need them to be provided at any time the management needs them. We've mentioned that earlier as well, where there can be a fixed interval or they could be um, needed on an as needed basis. And then be prepared to report information for any unit of the business to support decision making. Yes, one of the main reasons we have these reports is to support business decision making.
The controller staff often consists of several management accountant, accountants. All of the following would most likely be on the controller staff except. So we're trying to figure out who would normally be on the controller's staff and it often consists of several management accountants. So we have a general accountant, budgets and budget analysis, investments and shareholder relations, and cost accountants. We're gonna rule out general accountants because we're gonna rule out A, I'm sorry, number one and four, because these are both accountants. It says that they're accountants. And we know that in the problem, it's telling us the controller staff consists of several management accountants. So we can already rule out general accountants and cost accountants. Um, the other two, we have budgets and budget analysts, and we have investments and shareholder relations managers. Yep, that's correct. Um, it is three. So investments and shareholder relations managers are not normally part of the controller's staff. Um, general accountants, budget and budget analysts, and cost accountants, they are all um, types of accountants, even though an accountant is not in the name of budget and budget analysts, they're analyzing the financial information and pulling the budgets together and all of that. So. So that's correct. C was the correct answer. Or number three was the correct answer. Which of the following are basic phases of the management process? Planning and controlling. The Darwin Company reports the following information. So we have so they're asking us, what are the product costs? So they want us to figure out what the product costs are. So we have sales of 76,500, direct materials used of 7,300, depreciation on factory equipment of 4,700, direct labor, 5,900, um, sorry, indirect labor, 5,900, Direct labor is 10,500. Factory rent is 4,200. Factory utilities, 1,200. Sales, salaries, expense is 15,600. Office salaries, expense is 8,900. And indirect materials is 1,200. So we're trying to figure out what our product costs are for this. Okay, perfect. 
Ready. I think you're about to say the right one. I don't want to put you on the spot, but. No. <laughs> Four is correct. Um, so product cost is direct materials cost. So we have our direct materials cost of 73. This is our direct materials used, direct materials cost, 73,100, sorry. And then um, direct labor is this 10 5 and so then we just need to figure out what our factory overhead cost is yep so for factory overhead we've got change this so we've got our 4700 our depreciation our indirect labor is going to be part of our factory overhead cost Factory rent is, can, is part of factory overhead. Our factory utilities and our indirect materials. And so when we add all of those up, it's going to give us this 35,000. So direct materials, 7,300. Direct labor cost was the 10.5, and then the total of our depreciation on factory equipment, indirect labor, factory rent, factory utilities, and indirect materials. That's going to give us our factory overhead. Um, sales don't have anything to do with any of these. It's not a direct materials cost, direct labor cost, or factory overhead cost. So we can rule that one out. Um, and then the same with our sales, salaries, expense, and our office salaries, expense. So neither, none of those were needed because they're not a direct material, direct labor, or factory overhead cost. So now they want us to calculate our period cost. And period is, it's a period. So you could think of um, you know, like a period months or it could be, you know, so um, it's not, you have product cost and you have period cost. So they're different. It's going to be the total of your salaries. Total of your salaries. Yep, 24.5. Mm -hmm. So our salaries, our sales salaries, and our office salaries are considered our period cost. So that's correct. You're right. So we take the fifteen thousand six hundred plus the eight thousand nine hundred, and that gives you your twenty-four thousand five hundred for period cost. Now they want us to figure out what is our cost of goods manufactured.
Close. Um, very close. So we're going to take our beginning work in process inventory plus our cost of materials used plus our direct labor cost plus our factory overhead. So we're going to add all these up. And then we're going to subtract out whatever's left, our work in process ending inventory. And that's going to give us uh, 122,000. So um, cost of goods manufactured, work in process beginning plus cost of materials used plus direct labor cost plus factory overhead minus whatever you have left over minus the work in process ending inventory. This is the last one. So they want us to figure out what the direct materials used is. Yep. So to find the direct materials used, we're going to take our cost of goods manufactured minus our work in process beginning plus our work in process ending, subtract out any direct labor cost and any, defect, any factory overhead. So cost of goods manufactured of 8,000 minus the work in process beginning inventory of 14,000 plus our work in process ending of 20,000 minus direct labor cost of 4,000 minus factory overhead of 8,000 leaves us with $2,000 and that's our direct materials used. <laughs> it's a lot of adding and subtracting. So that is the, that's the end of the practice.